pimp equation when there are two conductors which are very close but not touching. They are making a uh, building with mud and throw bricks. And humans have been using composite material for a long time. So you see, just use the mud brick that is uh, very strong, but when we bend, it seems to break. So people just add uh, some throws, and it gives you a better tensile strength. The, 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 the mud throw brick color is now strong uh, with the compressive force and also strong to the tensile force. The, uh, the composite material uh, has many interesting problems, mathematical problems we can do. We can derive some effective property, which is the overall uh, material parameter we face a homogenization problem, or design some nanostructure that uh, there are to uh, control the motion of photons. So for example, in photonic crystal, if you make some periodic structure, then rise the uh, move, follow some wave bias, uh, and also we can control the, the frequency of the wave of uh, the, the light, a certain uh, frequency pass through the, the photonic crystal structure, but the other uh, uh, end of frequency wave pass through the, the, uh, the photonic crystal. Or one interesting problem is to uh, design clocking material. So, so when we make it some uh, highly oscillating periodic structure and I, I go inside that material then I'm invisible. So mathematically we can make invisible clock and yeah here here is my friend but he's invisible. That that, that could be possible. Yeah yeah. This is one example of composite material in the eight eight and all of this material has different property. Yeah, yeah, composite material is very useful and, and there are many mathematical uh, problems. Uh, there are many interesting problems. But today, I will talk about the gradient estimate, which is to get upper bound and lower bound of gradient of U and U is the solution to the conductivity equation or elastic equation. But what, what, why we do this gradient estimate? Here is one reason we do uh, the gradient estimate. If you look at this corner, then uh, you can see th this crack start from the corner point. The, the, the crack uh, start from this point because at the corner usually we have more uh, high stress con uh, concentration. That means the gradient of U of uh, elastic equation is much bigger than the other part. So at, at this corner part, stress or a gradient of U is very uh, high so yeah, the, the crack start from this corner point. I mean, th this is one example why we should do gradient estimate. And the stress is very important um, uh, parameter in the, in the material science. And I will explain uh, the equation we are interested in, that is the elliptic system. Yeah, I got the scan from the, the ODE book in, in, in the applied differential equation class textbook. Yeah, many people will uh, know about this border. Yeah. So 
if, if you have uh, springs and it, uh, and mass system, it satisfies uh, the summation of the spring first. For example, at this mass M1, the, the summation of the spring first is K2 times X2 minus X1 minus K1 times X1. That is the same as the external force of F. So, so in the continuous model, when there is a deformation, then the, the, that deformation has elongation. Elongation means here X2 minus X1, or just X1 because it is fixed case. The deformation uh, induces elongation that is X prime, and from the uh, spring equation, the internal force is spring constant K times elongation, that is X prime. And then all the forces are balanced. The summation of internal force becomes uh, the external force. And that summation is here, even reduced summation, since the spring force direction is reversed, actually we should subtract one internal force from other internal force. So that part, uh, it, the difference part becomes uh, differentiation. So in the continuous model, of uh, 1D, uh, the elastic equation is the con uh, elastic constant K, X prime, and then take uh, one more prime, then it stays, it's uh, the same as uh, given external force. And that system is extended to elastic system when uh, we have uh, deformation in, uh, in 3D. So there are three, uh, U1, U2, U3, so the X1 deformation and X2 and X3 uh, direction deformation. That uh, uh, deformation satisfies uh, elongation, I mean derivative of U times material constant and then we take derivative again, then it's the same as given uh, external force. Th that, that is the elliptic system we are interested in, and the, the, uh, the main work I did is to get gradient of U uh, to, this, to the solution of this elliptic system. Uh, but th it's very hard to get uh, fine mathematical estimate for the gradient of U. Uh, so we just reduced the equation to the two-dimensional case. If uh, the material is two-dimensional, or we can think a five reinforced material. So I put fibers in the background then, and then cut so f for some special case uh, the elastic system becomes conductivity equation and also it has meaning in 3D case because when you have two conductors, then the, uh, this equation uh, is about uh, voltage potential. So the gradient of U tells you the electric spark. When, when you put two conductors, then there is spark between these two, two uh, conductors and uh, yeah. So th this equation is two meaning. One is the stress estimation, and the other is uh, elect, uh, estimate the, the uh, electric uh, flux. Yeah. Again, our final goal is to study this. Multiple inclusion case, and again, it's very hard. So I just think about uh, the two inclusion case at first. So I suppose the background um, material parameter is just constantly one, and inside two 
inclusion, uh, the, con the material par uh, parameter is just constant K1 and K2. And H is given harmonic function. You can think it's applied voltage potential. And U, uh, U is the, the perturbed voltage potential because of this inclusion. But without the inclusion, the voltage potential is just equal to the H function. But since I put some inclusion, uh, the U as perturbation, but far away from the inclusion, you is you approach again to the given uh, background potential H of X. There are uh, is bounded in this result when material constants are, are away from zero and infinity. The zero means um, the gradient of U on the boundary is uh, just zero. And infinity case is like perfect conductor, so the voltage potential is constant inside the inclusion. So if U is not the extreme case, so it's away from zero and infinity, then gradient of U is bounded. That is a, a result by Lee and Nirenberg. Oops. And uh, also unbounded result for K is infinity. So when potential is constant inside the uh, inclusion, then uh, the gradient of U becomes infinity. So as the distance between the two inclusions gets closer and closer, the gradient of U uh, blow up. Uh, as 1 over square root to epsilon. That, that was the numerical result by Budianski and Courier. And my, my question was, what, what will happen if k uh, is very, very, very small, but not zero? If, if it is very large number, but it's not infinity. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's not a perfect conductor, but k, if k is very large number, then what happened as the, the distance of T inclusions uh, degenerate to zero? So this is the conductivity equation. So when you have a uh, voltage potential, that U satisfies this equation. And the one and K uh, is the yeah, constant. Co yeah, conductivity constant. So outside inclusions, I assume that the background is homogeneous with conductivity constant one, and inside inclusion, uh, it has different material property the con with uh, the constant conductivity K1 for inclusion B1 and K2 for B2. Is it a function of the X and Y? Uh, that is characteristic function. So th this number is 1 outside two inclusions and K1 inside B1 and K2 inside B2. So B1 and B2 are the whole the discussing here? This composite material. Yeah, this composite material. Uh, yeah. My uh, ultimate goal is to uh, have 
multiple bi's with general shape, but so chi is a function of x and y, right? Chi is characteristic. Just so, so it, it depends on the shape of the bi, right? Just zero outside b, mm -hmm. one inside. You are taking labradi of this because you have. There should be some function there, otherwise. Uh, this one? Yeah, there's the, 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 uh, this There's di divergence. Right, divergence. Yeah. So, so you are you are taking partial derivative of some function. Mm -hmm. What is the function? U. U has the U is the voltage potential. Oh, this times this times delta U. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, um, okay. Yeah. So it's a material, material property conductivity kind of profile. Yeah. Time. Yes. If uh, it's a constant, then you have Laplace equation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, first, I will explain about uh, the two-dimensional result when I have two circular fibers. And the second case is spherical inclusions in 3D when there are, are two uh, uh, balls. And then I'll finish with decomposition theorem. Uh, yeah, based on the applied background potential of capital H, U is, is decomposed into one blob part and uh, another term which has known blob property. Okay, again, the, the equation uh, we're uh, considering is this conductivity equation. Yeah, outside these two uh, inclusions, conductivity is just constantly one, and inside uh, inclusions, uh, we have conductivity K1 and K2, and H is applied background potential, and U is perturbed because we have two uh, inclusions. See, uh, then if, if you uh, look at the uh, the connectivity equation, inside included and outside included has different material properties. So the, the solution, uh, it, uh, I mean solution is transmission condition. The Drickler part, uh, the U from the interior and U from the exterior is matched. But the uh, normal derivative part, there is uh, mean transmission condition. So the in interior conductivity, that is K, the K times normal derivative is the same as uh, exterior conductivity, that is 1 times exterior normal derivative. So the U is like this, it is continuous, but uh, the, the, the derivative uh, has this continuity. Yes, it's like hat function. The derivative from this side is positive, but derivative from this side is, yeah, it has different number. And when K is uh, the interior uh, Connectivity constant k is infinity. Then to make the this um, derivative from inside and outside be matched, then the normal derivative from inside should be zero because k is infinity. So when k is infinity, that is a uh, conducting case, u is constant inside. And when k is zero, since uh, I multiplied interior derivative with zero, the, the exterior part also should be zero. The, so the normal derivative from exterior is zero. The so conducting case, case infinity, the U interior is constant, and in relating case, then K uh, is zero, and normal derivative is zero. OK. 
Okay, then how, wh where should we start? I mean, our uh, uh, goal is to estimate gradient of U, and U satisfy the transmission condition. In the required part, uh, I mean, U the required condition from interior and exterior are matched, but the normal uh, derivative as uh, this continuity. So we, we start from the single layer potential. A single layer is uh, when you have potential of phi, then a single layer potential is integral on the boundary uh, with fundamental solution multiplied by uh, phi. And the single layer potential is continuous on the boundary D, but it has a uh, jump when you take normal derivative. So the solution uh, U can be represented like this. H is the the uh, applied background potential and the single layer potential on boundary uh, B1 and single layer potential on boundary B2. And so, yeah, since the single layer uh, is continuous, so we only need to match the, the normal derivative part. If we take uh, derivative from inside, then, then since uh, single layer potential B1 has uh, uh, I mean, this continuity, one of the derivative has minus one half times i, the other one has a plus one half times i. And then we uh, just solve the du over the nu is the same as k times derivative from inside, you can derive this uh, boundary integral equation. The potential phi 1 and phi 2 satisfy these two conditions. So lambda 1 uh, is constant uh, from conductivity constant, and then uh, here you have normal derivative of H and single layer potential on B2. So these are from yeah this normal derivative, and and derive one more equation on this uh, the second uh, inclusion. So th th these are uh, potentials phi one and phi two. And what is phi one? I at first I uh, I start by just lambda on phi one is the right hand side. I mean neglect the, this phi 2 term, then phi 1 is just 1 over lambda times the right hand side, and phi 2 is 1 over lambda times the right hand side. And then I plug in this part to this phi 2 function, and then move this normal derivative to the right hand side. So uh, one by one, uh, I add uh, uh, Functions, yeah. It's, I start from the blue one and then plug in to the second equation, and then it comes to the first equation again. So the phi one and phi two are infinite series. So why we should get this potential function? Because the normal derivative is some constant multiple of the potential function. So if you estimate the potential, then you estimate the gradient. Uh, on the boundary. The tangential part is similar to, uh, to the normal derivative, so I will just explain this normal derivative part. Yeah, phi 1 and phi 2 has this infinite series of representation. And in 2D, uh, the good thing is for, uh, for a disk, the normal derivative of a single layer potential is just reflection. Between uh, the between these two discs, so our uh, one is reflection with respect to the ball, uh, disc one, and our two is uh, the reflection function again. And the phi one and phi two is now uh, some constant. The so lambda one and lambda two comes from the uh, conductivity constant k one and k two, and then normal derivative 
of reflective function. Yeah, all two uh, reflection uh, with respect to B2 and R1, yeah, it's reflection again. And H is the applied background potential. So, yeah, phi 1 and phi 2 is now infinite series. And, uh, yeah, again, our question is the, the upper bound and lower bound of uh, greater than U. So, yeah, we, we want to have the, the optimal bounds for the phi 1 and phi 2 function. Then what is normal derivative? A gradient of reflection of H is the, the right hand side, yeah. We apply chain rule uh, for 2k times, then it's gradient of k evaluated at the reflected point and uh, in gradient of reflection functions. At first, I suppose the two discs are separated by epsilon. Then this uh, gradient of reflection function is bounded by radius squared divided by uh, distance to the center point. And since uh, we have distance epsilon, the, 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 this number is uh, greater than 1 over 1 over constant times epsilon. And then uh, you take multiple times of uh, reflection. So the gradient of reflected function of H is 1 over epsilon. Uh, so so the, it's bounded by uh, 1 over 1 plus constant times epsilon to the yeah, 2 times n. Yeah, if, if we have just one reflection, then it's like 1 over 1 plus epsilon. And, and then uh, the phi is infinite summation. So when we take summate, uh, summation from 1 to infinity, then it is uh, yeah, one over is, is is epsilon. So when when two uh, discs are separated by epsilon, then uh, the phi is bounded by one over epsilon. But actually, uh, one over epsilon is not optimal bound. So the, when you do uh, reflections again and again. The points where uh, the, the the reflected points now located in between this blue uh, circle and the, the red circle. So the radius is uh, square to epsilon. So before we had one over epsilon bound, but actually the located point is away uh, by yeah by security epsilon, so the, the optimal bound is 1 over security epsilon. Yeah, this is the, uh, the result. So when uh, you have all star, which is the, the security of multiplication of two radius of discus uh, divided by the summation of disk, and tau is 1 over 4 times lambda 1 and lambda 2, and that number is 1 when k is 0 or infinity. So if you look at this gradient, then some number is divided by uh, some some number uh, divided by one minus tau plus some number times square root of epsilon. So when k is zero or infinity, one minus tau is zero. Uh, so in that extreme case, uh, the optimal bound is one over square root of epsilon. And uh, even k is not extreme uh, case. You, we can uh, take uh, yeah it's here one over one minus tau. That is one. Uh, yeah, one minus tau is like k one plus k two when k is small, or k one one over k one plus one over k two when uh, the the uh, conductivities are very big number. 
So th that's how we got optimized one over square root epsilon. Yes, uh, and if you look at this numerator, then since uh, we take gradient h dot n, when uh, h has the direction like this, the, the normal direction, then blood happen. But if h is the tangential direction, then uh, the blow up doesn't happen. And uh, the, one of the uh, disk has small radius, then again, blow up doesn't happen. Okay, then what? Why three cases uh, is difficult and why we cannot get similar results for general shape domain and how, how, what about multiple inclusions? Then 2D case, the, uh, the, um, the, the estimate based on the, on the relation between the normal derivative of single layer potential and the reflection, but that, that doesn't happen in the 3D case. So even we have infinite series expansion for the potential function phi1 and phi2, it's, it, then we cannot go further. I mean, there is no reflection style representation. In the general shape domain again, yeah, the single layer potential uh, for general shape domain is not simple. So yeah, that's difficult. Yeah, so for two discus case in 2D, we had um, optimal bound, I mean, that is the lower bound and upper bound for uh, two discus of uh, radius R1 and R2 with conductivity constant K1 and K2, and that number could be zero, any, any number from zero to infinity. And to get a better result for general shape to domain or multiple case, oh, now we just restrict to the uh, conducting case, that is the k is infinity. Then inside inclusion u is constant, and on the boundary, the normal derivative satisfies this condition. And on, the bound, on the boundary of d, normal derivative integral is zero, and again, uh, u minus h decays to zero as x goes to infinity. So away from the inclusion, u is like applied uh, voltage potential. And, and uh, if, yeah, if your solution has constant value inside the uh, con conductors and it, uh, its difference is, uh, I mean, if you know the, the difference between this C1 and C2, which is the constant value of U, then since the, the, the two discus or balls are, are way uh, uh, with the distance epsilon, the gradient u at least is uh, bigger than the, the uh, potential difference divided by epsilon. And I, yeah, what happened if C1 and C2? In, in that case, gradient is, uh, uh, is bounded, I mean, no blob happened that uh, we got this result. So we know at least the, the potential should should be different to have blow up when it soon goes to zero. And here is a nice idea uh, by Gian Yunz, who, who is my colleague. And, and uh, his idea is to get the difference between the potential. He used this H function. Now H is again harmonic and constant inside two conductors. But then a uh, normal derivative is integral is not zero. Now it's positive one or negative one, and h uh, is, is decays to zero. 
And then the uh, difference be uh, between the two potential value, u on the first conduct and u on the second conduct is integral of this h function times uh, given background potential h. Yeah. So we, we can prove it by applying uh, Green's identity from inside and outside. So to, to get the potential difference, what we need to do is uh, to have this h function and take boundary integral. And he, uh, based on this idea, he got a uh, uh, 2D uh, result for case infinity when uh, two inclusions are general shaped, not just this case. And in all three, as I explained, it's uh, difficult because the single layer potential normal derivative is not just a uh, reflection function. And, he, and we try to get the optimal uh, I mean upper bound and lower bound, but we had no idea. But then uh, here comes the group of Yan Yan Li and his students. They, they got the result 1 over epsilon times log epsilon. And actually we are very surprised because uh, in, in 2D case the optimal bound was 1 over square root epsilon. So our guess is it will be like 1 over, just 1 over epsilon or yeah, I mean, we, we never uh, think about to have one overall log epsilon time upper bound. And, and this group, they got uh, this upper bound by separating u into three functions, u, v0 and v1 and v2. So as I explained before, when there is no potential difference, then no blob happened. So what they did is to separate into solution, uh, V0 has uh, no potential difference, and V1 uh, is 1 uh, in D1 and 0 on the other uh, inclusion. So. So V1 has 1 on D1 and 0 on D2 and uh, the V2 is uh, yeah, 0 on D1 and 1 on D2. So, and then they estimated the C1 minus C2 because that tells you the potential difference. So the gradient U is uh, bounded by the potential difference divided by uh, the distance epsilon. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, I mean, the, both the upper and a lower bound is estimated as yeah, potential difference over epsilon. And the main idea they used was the maximum principle and the boundary estimate for uh, harmony functions. Yeah, so uh, when, when we uh, uh, found out the, the group, Yan Yan Li group had uh, optimal uh, uh, balance for a 3D case. We, we are very disappointed because we tried and then spent a lot of time and then didn't get any, I mean, we didn't get the one over log of Stolen part. But then um, the Yan and I, we, are, we went to one uh, conference in Beijing and then, yeah. And we, we wanted to produce some new result because we spent a lot of time and then, well, yeah, what can we do? And their, their work, uh, Lee and Bao in. The optimal bounds is, yes, it, the gradient of u is bounded by some constant. And they, they don't know about which constant should be there. I mean, the, 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 the size of d1, 
size of D2 or uh, the curvature of D1 and curvature of D2. I mean, they, they don't have a, any idea about this C. They, they drive that. The gradient of U is uh, bounded by some constant. And some constant. What about epsilon? Do you know anything about this epsilon? Epsilon is the distance between, between two. Two, yeah. Material. Yes. <coughs> So, uh, they are having two materials, not many? Actually, they extended their result to, many. yeah, multiple inclusion case. Not a circular shape, not a spherical shape. But no, be, because their method uh, is based on variational formula. So, so, so my, my method was to use the single layer potential. In the general shape domain, is is it's not possible to calculate it. But their method is uh, to use uh, uh, the variation of formula that is to minimize some integral of gradient v square. So, yeah. So any shape? Mm -hmm. so, uh, some convex shape, convex. yeah. So Gian and I started to use uh, uh, idea uh, to, to use a small h function to get the potential difference. Yeah, he, th this is one uh, yeah, starting point to have, uh, I mean, the, the C function, the, uh, the upper bound of this, uh, no, uh, the ball's case in 3D. And if you look at the H function, it satisfies a lot plus H is zero and uh, H is constant on its inclusion and the normal derivative integral is positive one or a negative one. And actually, that is exactly the same as the log of x minus uh, one fixed point of two reflection function. So p1 and p2 are the fixed point of the, the reflection. Then h is log of x minus p1 minus log of x minus p2. Why that happen? Uh, when when you have one ball and a point also outside of B, then x minus reflected point of P times P minus C is the same as x minus P times R. Yeah, that that is the Apollonian circle. So when we divide x minus one fixed point by x minus the other fixed point. Then on the boundary D1 is R1 over P2 minus P1, and on D2 is P1 minus P2 over R2. Because P1 and P2 are reflective points. So, yeah, based on this idea, if I take log of this function, then log is a fundamental solution of Laplacian in R2, and this function is constant on its boundary. So yeah, H is, is simply just log x minus p1 minus log x minus p2. But in all three, that doesn't happen. So, <laughs> so reflection, actually, inversion, reflection, so clever reflection, but I mean. Yeah, reflection with respect to, to circles. Okay. Yeah. So I, I take at first reflection all uh, one and take all two or all two and then all one, then. Uh, two points, if this reflect, yeah, one point P1 goes to P2, and when you reflect it, then it goes to, again, uh, the P1 position. So, 
So uh, the potential difference is integral derivative of h times background potential, and h is uh, log of x minus p1. So it, when we apply the divergent theorem again, then this integral is evaluation of h at the p1 point minus h uh, uh, evaluated at the p2 point. And, and the P, if we calculate the P1 and P2, it's like uh, the, this number times Q root epsilon. So again, the point is where the reflections are located. So the, the, in 2D case, it's very easy. I mean, the potential difference is Q root of multiplication of radius divided by summation of radius times Q root epsilon. That, that is exactly the same as uh, the estimation I made with single layer potentials. You know, three, that doesn't happen because uh, uh, in 2D case, the fundamental solution to the Laplacian is log function. And uh, yeah, I I know x minus p one over x minus p two is constant from the Apollonian circle property. So so by taking log, it becomes the subtraction log x minus p one minus x minus p two. But in 3D case, the fundamental solution is 1 over x. Yeah. So, yeah, 1 over x minus p1 minus 1 over x minus p2, that is one fundamental solution minus another fundamental solution when the source point is in, on p1 and p2. It, it, <laughs> Uh, when you take Laplace of that function becomes Dirac delta. Yeah, uh, yeah. in two D, this uh, fundamental solution subtraction was constant because it was log x minus p one minus x minus p log x minus p two. So h then. The, that uh, subtraction of fundamental solution was H function, so everything was easy. But in our three case, this function is not constant, so we, we should do something more. So what we do is we start from X minus C1, and C1 is one of the center point, and then since this function is constant on boundary D1, but not constant on boundary D2, I uh, subtract this function to be constant. And if you remember the Apollonian circle, we, we should use the, the reflected point all to C1. And so I add this function to make uh, the first function plus the second function to be constant on, on boundary D2. But again, it's not constant on boundary D1. So again, I add this, uh, the, the third function. And so one by one, uh, I make it to be constant on boundary D1 and constant to be, next step, make it constant to be uh, constant on boundary D2. So by adding a series of functions, we can get this H function. H is some constant times uh, 1 over x minus reflected point C, and again uh, 1 over x minus reflected point. So the, yeah, so just to make uh, it, just uh, make this function to be constant on, on the first inclusion, and the next step uh, constant on the on B2, so yeah. So H is the same for the series. And uh, 
Yeah, the, the potential difference u on boundary e1 minus u uh, on boundary d2 is the integral of, uh, of normal derivative h times given potential h integral. And when you estimate all this quantity, what is q, what is m, then from uh, that numbers, you get this uh, yeah, vulnerable log epsilon. Later, the gradient is uh, divided by epsilon. I mean, the, pot the gradient uh, U is bounded by the potential difference by epsilon. So you have one over epsilon log epsilon. A good thing is now you have all one times all two divided by all one plus all two. So we can understand the the uh, the effect of the size of two. Two balls. I mean, the the radius of so all uh, the balls are one and all two uh, becomes yeah this number. So in all two we have square root, but in all three we don't have, and the the optimal rate is one over epsilon times log epsilon. Okay. Uh, yeah, the final step is uh, the decomposition theorem. If we go back to the first uh, topic of today, it was uh, the estimate for two discus cases. The gradient of U is bounded by uh, gradient of H divided by 1 over K1 plus 1 over K2 <coughs> times some constant times security epsilon. But now if you compare the left-hand side and the right-hand side, the left hand side we have gradient h dot uh, normal direction n. So the, the problem happens when h is tangential direction function. When h is uh, t dot x, then the left hand side is zero. Yeah, we take gradient h that is t dot normal direction. So the, the left hand side is zero, but still the right hand side is one. And you have gradient h that is tangential, so the even blob doesn't happen in the right-hand side, but, but it does in the right-hand side. So yeah, there, there's something we should do more. Yeah. If, if you go back to the, um, uh, the, the derivative of reflected function of background potential age, uh, it is normal uh, normal direction nu of x times gradient of h evaluated at the reflected point. So if gradient of h uh, is small, small like small as x, then this part will be very small. And if h is x2, then the gradient, gradient has direction it has normal direction. When you take uh, inner product, uh, no, when h is x2, then it's the tangential direction. So when you take inner product with normal vector, then it's zero. So if a greater than h is small or uh, h is tangential direction, then no blow up happens. Yeah, we can decompose u as u of singular part plus u of regular part, and the regular part is bounded, and singular part you have just gradient h dot normal direction. So the uh, so a, if h has I mean x one direction, then it has blow up, but for other directions or uh, x square term, no blow up happen. And then here is the the, the rest one. Uh, th this is positive permittivity case. So uh, before the constant uh, the constant conductivity was positive real number the k one. But what happens if uh, it has positive permittivity? That means the, uh, the constant profile is now complex value, and omega is a small number, but not zero, some positive number. Then 
then this pass, uh, then this uh, complex part will give blue up phenomena or each time it will be bound, uh, just bounded. That, that, that was our question. And if you look at this result, again, uh, we can separate it into singular solution and the regular solution. And the regular solution part is bounded, but the singular part, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it happened when sigma and sigma 2 is very small, and that part is uh, bounded by gradient h dot tau divided by this number. So again, we have 1 over squared epsilon, but rather than just have sigma 1, sigma 2, that is the real summation of real part, we have the imaginary part 2. Since the lambda comes from the conductivity constant, now the lambda is complex value, and the 1 minus tau uh, yeah, is this number. And the lambda, uh, yeah, since sigma and uh, omega epsilon is very small number, when uh, you take the small number plus 1 divided by small number minus 1, it's almost like minus 1 plus some number. So you get, yeah, so lambda is, uh, is like some quotient times exponential and we, we know uh, the angle is uh, very small and then, yeah, when you submit it, it's small as one over theta, so yeah, so you, we can prove the, the gradient of u is found in this number. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, uh, the gradient estimate uh, is, is not that studied much. Um, yeah, it's, and now there are several groups. Uh, so our next step is to get optimal bound for multiple inclusion case and uh, decomposition theorem in 3D and get effective parameter. So effective parameter are also uh, related with the gradient of U. So yeah, th this is another direction. And uh, what about the heat equation case? Yeah and uh, elastic system. Yeah, th there was our starting point, elastic system. But we moved to the conductivity equation because it's too difficult. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Now some, some groups are starting to, to attack this elastic system case. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well,